transient ischemic attack is basically the same as a stroke. That is, there's a neurological deficit and the signs are that it's a focal neurological deficit. So, for example, the face may not work, the arm may not work, or they may have difficulties with their speech. Good afternoon, to have a surgery. It is, yeah, what can we do for you? Okay, so you, you've had a funny turn, but it's gone off now. You couldn't move, it went tingly, and you couldn't move your arm. Right, okay, well I can't actually fit you in this afternoon. It will be about two weeks before you can see the doctor. What's it like now, has it got better? I'll certainly ask for you, but otherwise, you know, as I say, I'll give you a call back and we can fit you in. It will be about two, two weeks, but I will certainly mention it to the doctor. All right then, take care then, bye. Doctor, I just had Mr Steptoe on the phone. He said he'd gone, he'd had a funny turn and he'd gone numb down one side. Right. But he said it had worn off, so I just put, booked him in for two weeks. Right, so he's it, gone back to normal. He said it had gone back. Right. So I thought two weeks, because that's the first available appointment with you anyway. But he completely lost the use of Yeah. Mm. That so, sounds like a TIA to me. Oh. Can you ring him back, huh? and can you ask him to get his wife to bring him straight down so yeah. that I can see him? Yeah, I'll do that, yep. Yeah. Thank you. An estimated 150,000 people have a stroke in the UK each year. There are over 67,000 deaths due to stroke each year in the UK. Stroke is the third most common cause of death in England and Wales after heart disease and cancer. Stroke accounts for about 9% of all deaths in men and 13% of deaths in women. The direct cost of stroke to the NHS is estimated to be £2.8 billion. The cost of the wider economy is £1.8 billion. Costs of stroke care are predicted to rise in real terms by 30% between 1991 and 2010. Stroke patients occupy around 20% of all acute hospital beds and 25% of long-term beds. Stroke units save lives. For stroke patients, general wards have a 14 to 25% higher mortality rate than stroke units. Each year, over 130,000 people in England and Wales have a stroke. About 10,000 of these are under retirement age. Well, it's difficult to know how common TIAs are. Many people who have TIA symptoms don't seek medical attention. If you have the symptom of a TIA, you must seek medical attention as soon as possible. A TIA is a medical emergency. TIAs are a warning sign that further TIAs or a significant stroke may occur. Successfully treating a TIA early is important as it reduces other health problems such as blood pressure, high cholesterol, addressing problems of atrial fibrillation and it can prevent further strokes. I've just had a consultation with Albert. Albert's a 71-year-old gentleman who's been registered with this practice for some time. Um, he contacted the surgery this morning and after a little bit of resistance from the receptionist, he was given an urgent appointment. Um, so I've just seen him. Albert's story is that yesterday afternoon while he was sat in his lounge, he noticed some pins and needles down his left arm. And when he tried to lift his arm, it wasn't working um, as his right arm was. The symptoms went off after two hours and he didn't think to call 999 or to contact us at the time, but this morning um, he thought he ought to come and see a doctor as soon as he could. As I say, he's a 71-year-old gentleman. He's got a past history of diabetes controlled by diet alone, and he's also had hypertension for a number of years for which he takes amlodipine. He's taken a small dose of aspirin for several years. When I examined Albert, he was fully alert and orientated. His pulse rate was 84 and regular. There was no sign of atrial fibrillation. His blood pressure was a little bit elevated at 165 over 95, but there were no neurological symptoms. I've made a diagnosis of transient ischemic attack and using the NICE ABCD2 score, 
Albert comes out with a score of seven, which means that he is at high risk of having a stroke. The ABCD2 is based on A for age, B for blood pressure, C for clinical symptoms, and D for both duration and diabetes. And using that score, Albert's score shows he's at high risk. Because of that, I've asked Albert to increase his aspirin to 300 milligrams a day and to carry on with his normal blood pressure treatment. I've advised him not to drive and he'll be coming back in the morning to get some fasting blood tests taken. What I'm now going to do is complete a TIA clinical referral form, which I will fax through as a high risk referral to the hospital and that will include all of Albert's details. I've received Albert's referral and looking through his letter, his score, his ABCD2 score is 7, so we know he's at high risk of a stroke. If they're between 4 and 7, then I know this patient needs to be seen in the next 24 hours. If it's between 1 and 3, then that patient can wait a little longer. In both cases, we have to see them urgently. Usually what we do is phone him up and make an appointment, not really so much at his convenience, but at a time when we can get him in to get everything done within 24 hours. And he has to, be, he has to know that that's going to happen. Um, it's important that he's been warned not to drive. His legal obligation is not to drive. Uh, it's not a matter of choice. This, this is the DVLA instructions. Um, when I receive his referral, and I get him up to my clinic, the first thing that I'll want to do is to go through his story carefully to make sure that what's been said in the letter uh, marries up with the problems that he's perceiving at that time. I see quite a lot of people who have been told that in the past they've had a transient ischemic attack and when I go through their history it's been what I'd call a dustbin diagnosis, that is, they've had a funny do of some sort and they've been labelled as having suffered a transient ischemic attack when in fact it hasn't been. Only about one in three people that are referred to the transient ischemic attack clinic actually has had a transient ischemic attack. There are various stroke mimics and they can be hard to tell the difference. However, there's some conditions that would be very unusual to be stroke. Now, the commonest one that I see is blackouts. Generally strokes or TIAs don't cause blackouts so if a patient has suffered a blackout it's likely they're suffering with some other condition. Another referral I get is people that complain of dizziness. Now that would be an unusual symptom for a TIA but of course if there was any doubt about the neurology then we'd rather see people uh, than make a mistake. If a patient complains of numbness in both hands, that's unlikely to be related to a stroke. It's more likely to be related to symptoms such as over-breathing or some other medical problem. Patients who have had uh, walking difficulties that are continuing are not likely to have suffered a transient ischemic attack. They've either had a stroke, in which case the symptoms will be still there, and of course they should be admitted to hospital, or they've got another medical condition. I will go through with Albert what the plans are for his future and I discuss it as a yellow card, a warning to him and I go through the investigations I'm going to do. I explain with the, the reason for the carotid Doppler examination that is to look for a narrowing of the carotid artery. If the narrowing is critical, that is between 70% and 99%, then he would be referred urgently to the vascular surgeons. It's about one in 50 people that actually need to have surgery. Atrial fibrillation is one of the risk factors that does seem to get undertreated. 
atrial fibrillation is a major risk for stroke. Um, when I see people come in in atrial fibrillation and they've had a stroke, it's often a large and life-changing stroke. That is because they've thrown a large embolus off from their left atrium. The risk can be reduced considerably by giving anticoagulants such as warfarin. The warfarin reduces the risk of stroke by as much as two-thirds. The warfarin obviously has its downsides in that it needs regular checking and can interact with a lot of other tablets. It's important for all staff that see people that have had TIAs to check the pulse to make sure that they haven't slipped into atrial fibrillation. Sometimes atrial fibrillation can be intermittent. These people will benefit from warfarin even though they're not in atrial fibrillation all the time. And so not checking these people's pulses is missing an opportunity to get them on the right treatment. Nice guidance is that people are followed up following their uh, secondary care visit within six weeks. And obviously that has to be a, a directed follow-up, making sure that the patient's taking the tablets, bringing about the lifestyle changes, and most importantly, checking the blood pressure. Every 10 millimeters of mercury, the blood pressure goes up. It doubles the risk of a, a further TIA or stroke. And that's obviously very serious. Um, we would want the GP to work to a systolic blood pressure of 130. I tend to talk about systolic blood pressure rather than diastolic because the evidence is that once we're above 45, it's the systolic that's much more important than the diastolic. The cholesterol target is slightly different from the quaff target. We believe the right target to go for at this time is a cholesterol of four or less and an LDL of two or less. Simple reductions in things like blood pressure, for example, if the blood pressure is reduced by 10 millimeters of mercury, can half the risk of stroke. So making these changes make a real difference. A lot of stroke patients are very, very worried about their future. We know it's the biggest cause of disability in, the, in this country. Stroke is not a quick fix. It's a, often a long, slow, uphill struggle for them. When Albert and patients like him are discharged home, they're often very, very frightened, they're anxious, and they have great concerns that they're going to have another stroke bearing in mind that these patients suffer from extreme tiredness and fatigue. When a patient's discharged from hospital, he should see a complex case manager for secondary stroke prevention advice and support at home. Patients, when they come home, have often been given advice, um, but either don't remember it or they haven't understood it. My role is to try and explain to the patient why they've had the stroke. A lot of patients need to know why they've had the stroke. We need to discuss lifestyles with the patient and how they can make small changes. We look at things like um, diet, a healthy diet. We always assume patients that uh, patients understand diet, they don't. We look at reducing weight sensibly. We look at trying to get the patient to stop smoking if they're a smoker. We look at alcohol consumption, especially for patients who are binge drinkers. It's important to discuss patients who have hypertension and who have hyperlipidemia. Patients need to know what they're aiming for and how to achieve this. At the end, it is their responsibility. If you have a hemiplegia, putting your makeup on becomes difficult and almost impossible. If you go into a restaurant and you're unable to cut up your food, it causes great embarrassment for the patient. A lot of patients have loss of libido and have sexual dysfunction and problems. These do need to be openly discussed. Use the FAST test. It can help you recognize the symptoms of stroke. F, facial weakness. Can the person smile? Has their mouth or eye drooped? A, arm weakness. Can they raise both arms? New loss of use? Weakness of an arm or a leg? S, speech problems. Can the person speak clearly and understand what you say? T, time to call 999. If you see any single one of these signs, time is important when dealing with a stroke. 
fast access to treatment is vital. Good afternoon, tepid surgery. Oh, hello, Mr. Steptoe. What can we do for you? OK. So you, you've had a funny turn, but it's gone off now. You couldn't move. It went tingly and you couldn't move your arm. Oh, right. No I, no, I think what we'll do is we'll fit you in this afternoon and we'll let doctor have a look at you just to make sure. Is there anybody who can bring you down? No, it's no bother, honestly. We can fit you in this afternoon. There's, there's absolutely no problem about that, but I really do think you need to be seen just to make sure. Okay, so if you can get, get your wife to bring you and then any time, come down now and I'll just go and let doctor know that you're on your way. Oh, okay then. All right then. You're welcome then. Bye.